welcome. I, uh, it's it's the, the latest review of the week in epi- or uh, blog of the week in episode number three of uh, C12. I'm joined today by Charlie Osborne, who is a colleague of mine over at ZDNet. She writes the iGeneration column and uh, is, is pretty much our, our, our voice for the millennials over there. And uh, she actually wrote a great piece, though. She has uh, all sorts of good stuff that comes up uh, on, on learning and education. Obviously, a pretty critical thing for uh, for Gen Y because many of them are, are still in school, whether they're in uh, you know high school, uh, you know kind of the trailing edge of, of Gen Y uh, in college, or they're just stepping out into the job market. Um, they're still pretty deeply immersed in the world of education, and so Charlie brings uh, some some great perspectives to that. I uh, just wanted to uh, Charlie have you introduce yourself a little bit more than than I did. Tell us a, a bit about what you bring to the table, and then we'll we'll talk about your your blog on on you know memorization uh, and and uh, sort of rote versus understanding uh, in modern education. Sure, Chris. Um, yep. So my name's Charlie. Uh, I'm 24. And I currently live in London. Um, now my background is actually from teaching, so I come at it from as much as I can from a sort of on-the-ground perspective when I write about things like this. Um, because obviously I'm in both groups. I'm, all, I'm Gen Y in one way, but I've also taught Gen Y, as well as teaching people younger and far more older than me, uh, you know, going up to 65 years old in Saudi Arabia, which was a quite an interesting experience, you have to say. <laughs> um, <I'm sure. laughs> yeah, it was an interesting one. Um, I've also worked in business. I've done service. Um, I've taught in about 22 countries, I think, and counting. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a spotted past, really. And my latest job is working, as you said, at ZDNet and also the sister site, Smart Planet. Wonderful. And you're only 24? You've been busy. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so everyone says. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, why don't you just summarize your, your post on, on ZDNet for us, and we'll include a, a link for the audience, but just to summarize your post, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll chat a little about the ideas, but I think you, you hit on some, some really important points, and, and I wanted to just bring them to light. Sure. Um, the, the title of the post is called The Future of Education, Memorize and Analyze, and it's basically looking at how teaching methods, how current uh, Pedagogy. I can't even say it. Pedagogy. Is it pedagogy. I never I got pe- that right. I would say pedagogy and and and. Yeah, lots but you're of American. Pedagogy. That's exactly. Right. So, <laughs> and, and, and usually, East Coast people say pedagogy, and West Coast people like me say say pedagogy. So I don't know, but we know it's pedagogy. Mean. We'll go for that. One. <laughs> um, but basically, how it fits in with what um, the future in the global economy will actually expect students who are entering the workforce to be able to do. Um, and what I, gen- what I basically say in the article is that we're failing our students, pretty much. Um, <laughs> and the emphasis on how we do it is we're emphasizing on uh, memorizing data. But the thing is that we're in a data saturated environment. So what is the point? It's just absolute wasted time, wasted energy. And it's, you know, it's almost archaic now. Now, if you ask kids to memorize X, Y, and Z, well, they can look it up on Google at any point. They've all got mobile phones, they've all got tablets, they've all got this, that, and the other. Um, and it just seems an absolute waste for me that these kids are leaving school in an already tempestuous job market, and they're not being equipped with the right skills that employers want. So uh, Absolutely. it's just not right. <laughs> yeah. Do you think? I, I know, yeah. you know, it, it, it always... <laughs> It gets me, and, and this is this is even my own kids, and, and you know I've been in the classroom as well, and and when you you ask somebody to to go do some research here, here's a topic, go find out about just just you know five minute talk in class tomorrow about what you found, and the, and they come back to you and they say well, I didn't find anything, uh, you know I just didn't find what you didn't find there's nothing you can't find information on, and good information, not just you know the first three sponsored hits on Google, but you know. Really great information from some subject matter expert in somewhere because it's on the internet. It's the internet, and 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 it, and it drives me mad that students don't have a solid understanding of not just how to search effectively, but then to actually do something effectively with the information they find. It's it's just you know lots of data streams and 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 no ability to to sort them out or or really, uh, you know, effectively then, 
you know, analyze them and turn back to, to, to create a product. Whatever that product might be, it's not really even relevant what it is. It's, it's, um, it, it seems to be a nearly universal phenomenon. And it's, it's good to hear it's happening in Europe as much as it happens here in the States. <laughs> It really does. I mean, um, the amount of times that I'd ask a kid, you know, go and research this, and they would generally come back with a printout from Wikipedia. <laughs> That's not what I asked. I asked you to research something, to find out what's true, what's not, and to analyse it. And that's just something they cannot do. So they're used to having everything in front of them. So here we are. Okay, I can search this. Let's do this. Um, but they can't take it a step further. And that's the problem. And it's so important in so many businesses and relevant industries that, you know, you need to be able to take information, you know, whether you're looking at a sales pitch, whether you're starting up your own business, anything like that. And they just, you can't take it any further than let's do a printout of this. Let's look at this. And it's just, it just seems so pointless. It, it really does. Is. It absolutely is. And, and I don't know if it goes back to, you know, the, the way we've been teaching for the last several hundred years, uh, where, you know, here's, here's all your information and it's laid out in a textbook or it's, it's laid out on a, on a, on a chalkboard, uh, or on a papyrus <laughs> script. Uh, well, you know, that's it. I mean, that's what we're, but we're training kids to do that. That's the problem. So, 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 um, what, so what do we do? Where, where, where do we go and, and how do we change that mindset? I think we've got to change. I mean, it's a big ask, really, and there's there's no, you know, straight black or white answer to this. But we have to change our own view of what education actually means, because if you train a child to memorise facts in order to pass an exam, then that's what they're going to do. It's simple as that. Right. You know? So unless we change our own view of right, okay, if a child is able to be spoon fed these facts, therefore they get this grade on the exam. This means oh, they must be good. You know, we need to change that in itself. Um, you know, there are several universities in the UK that when it comes to their students, instead of giving them exams, they'll give you them an oral exam. So they'll ask them to explain about a project or something they've been working on to actually see how they process the information and what conclusions they come to. Now, obviously, that's not going to be, that should be brought down for, you know, kids that are in high school that are just going up that are looking to enter university. That's the kind of thing we should be doing, not saying, tell me everything you know about religion. It's just not good enough. <laughs> right. right. You know, I, I think it, it goes back to this idea of, of project-based learning. Uh, if you're not applying what you're, you're doing and you don't have an instructor there to kind of guide you through that process, uh, then it's just, it's just rote. And, uh, you know, the, the, the best practices that I've seen around this and, and the, the, the teachers who are, are the best able to actually have a student understand what's happened, uh, to actually master a concept, are those that are, are willing to, to get their <laughs> sleeves up and, and do a project with students. I was just on another webcast and I mentioned a, a project that my, my nine-year-old is doing and, 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 I, and I put him at the this, this school that he's at for a reason and I pay exorbitant sums to have him educated there for a reason, uh, is, is because every year they do a deep dive across the curriculum into a, a particular subject. This year it's the Middle Ages and, uh, and they are they're not just you know studying. You know, this is this is what happened to you know with the Black Plague. Uh, you know, lots of people died. Uh, they're actually uh, you know looking at, at bacteria, for example, or or you know vectors in their their science class, and they are uh, looking at you know the history of the Middle Ages and the growth of uh, Catholicism, and and now they're working. They're the last two months of school. They're writing a play, an original play, and they're going to perform it for the town, and they are. And, and the plays that have happened in the past with the school are, are actually really incredible for things that are written by, you know, 9, 10, 11 year olds uh, because they understand. And, and I can have a genuine conversation about the Middle Ages now with my 9 year old that I can't with my older children who, you know, made it through, uh, you know, this, this sort of traditional system where they have some vague recollection that the Middle Ages weren't a lot of fun. And <laughs> that's, that's it. You know, it's just really a, a very different thing. And, um, I, I, I can't uh, can't rail on this one enough, but yeah, I, I really uh, I thank you for for sharing this with us and, and talking about it. Uh, I guess we just keep up with a good fight and and keep uh, beating this into people's heads. But you know, I, I would uh, you know love to see more when when you do stumble across uh, teachers who do it right who make it happen. You know, I'd love to to see some of the success stories as well. 
Let's so, hope uh, we'll be able to find some. Yeah, yeah, I know. Good luck, right? It's, uh, they're, they're unfortunately few and far between, and uh, it's where, where we need to get to, but we have a ways to go. So Charlie Osborne uh, is with us from uh, from ZDNet and uh, joining us today from 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 London. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, definitely check out her blog. It's it's not just the the rantings of a of a Gen Y uh, by any means. So <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. You're welcome.